Sweetest love return again. Sweetest love return again. Make not too long a stay. Killing more and forcing pain. Sorrow leading way. Let us not thus parted be. Love and absence never agree. But since you must needs depart and me hapless leave. In your journey take my heart which will not deceive. Yours it is, to you it flies, joying in those loved eyes. So in part we shall not part, though we absent be. Time nor place nor greatest smart shall my bands be free. Tied I am, yet think it gain, in such knots I feel no pain. But can I live, having lost chiefest part of me? Heart is fled, and sight is crossed, these my fortunes be. Yet dear heart go, soon return, as good there as here to burn. So first I looked up the words I wasn't sure of. Mirth meant laughter. Hapless meant unlucky. Bands actually meant bonds. And chiefest was strongest. The rhyme scheme of the poem is A, B, A, B, C, C. The gray lines now represent the shifts in the poem. The first part represents how even though they want to be together, it's hard knowing that when they are together, they're looking forwards and seeing that they must depart, which is very hard for them. The second stanza is the woman confessing her love for the man and that no matter what, she will be there for him and nothing will make her leave him. The third is when she's in question of um, their relationship. And even though he, who she believes, has taken her heart, um, will still be faithful and it's Reassured by this last stanza, yet dear heart go, soon return, as good there as here to burn. She is still saying that she would, no matter what, she will be there for him. My first thoughts about the poem was that the man was at war, and that's why he wasn't home. One of the main reasons I thought this was because of the word killing mirth and forcing pain is just very... Um, just words common people would not use unless talking about war. You kill in war, you have a lot of pain in war, and it's just not everyday language. Also, the use of depart is very, um, a lot of connections to the military because usually when a man is going into being deport, like departed into the military, they use that word. One line that really stood out to me so far was line five, love and absence never agree. It just makes the reader question whether this relationship, that it's her sweetest love, but she's saying love and absence never agree if he, if this relationship actually does work out. So it forces the reader to keep reading to see what the outcome is. Next is the person personification in, next is the personification of in your journey take my heart which will not deceive yours it is to you it flies here she is saying that this man can take her heart because she has no other interest in other men but the heart it won't deceive not her her heart won't deceive him um which she won't commit any um infidelity and um to you it flies is more it's much more than just like it would go to you flying is a means of getting there faster getting there pronto and it just emphasizes her love for this man drawing in those loved eyes i think of this as he's be able the loved eyes belongs to the man and the man can see which the author stated earlier her heart so the man can see right to her heart which usually means he can see into her soul and see who she really is for who she is not what's on the outside and this leads into the so in part we shall not part even though that they are not together they complete each other enough so that they feel whole even when they're not because they know that they have each other's hearts next we see the temptation that she might have um so in part, we shall not part that I already discussed, but then it goes, though we be absent be, time nor place nor greatest smart shall my bands break free. Tad I am, yet think it gain, in such knots I have, feel no pain. This is her breaking the temptation. And that means 
even though she might be persuaded to try and forget about him, she will not because she is with him and that's all she needs. We also get insight on the author because when it says, shall my bands make free, and bands meant bonds earlier, it kind of um, casts a shadow. Um, bonds, everyone thinks of bonds as being, you know, like a bond in marriage. So maybe that this is her husband, not just a boyfriend or it it gives the poem a completely deeper meaning and this is also seen a few lines down in such knots I feel no pain knots like a wedding knot um and she, that she has a knot which usually isn't very good but she feels no pain because she is in marital bliss unlike a lot of couples of our modern day to paraphrase the poem, the first stanza would be that they are very happy to see each other, but it also is a bittersweet moment because they know that when he leaves, they'll be apart again, which is the hardest thing for them. And then in the second stanza, the woman states that even though they might not be together, her heart will always be faithful to him, and which is supported by lines 9 and 10. Um, in your journey, take my heart, which will not deceive. She's saying that no matter what, she'll be with him. And the next part would be, temptation will not get the best of her, and she will be undoubtedly faithful. And the last par stanza that I paraphrased would be, even though they are not together, she knows that the, her other half will come back to her. She does not know what will happen in the meantime, but her fortunes say that she will let them happen, and then in the end they will be together. The attitude of the poem is very warming, knowing that the woman loves this man so much she would do anything, even that, even though that she will see him for long. And it's make sure you notice that when they're apart, she uses stronger words, like killing and forcing. But when they're talking about being together, she uses the words drawing. And, um, it just, it's very warming to hear someone love someone so much. And also notice that periods are only used to make the statement stronger. As in, love and absence never agree. Um, in your journey take my heart, which will not deceive. And tied I am, yet think again, in such knots I feel no pain theme in the poem is that no matter how far the difference in the space in between, once you find someone that you love so much, no corruption in society or the smartest um, will ever break or disrupt it. I believe the title does not say Sweetest Love Stay because the woman is at peace. She knows that the man wouldn't, even though it's not with her, he's happy doing what he wants or that is a choice that he has made, and she's happy that he will come home. So by saying return again, it's not saying stay and never leave, it's saying return again, and it's more of an open-ended perspective to me that she doesn't mind him leaving, even though she would like for him to stay, she knows it won't make the man happy.